Well, I, I don't think anybody couldn't be moved when they see the visuals of what the people of Haiti are going through right now. So I think what, what Canada can do, um, they should try very hard to do. Um, we are uh, already doing lots in the world, but we can always, uh, as long as it is affordable to our country, we should do more. Uh, Canada has a good record of respecting other cultures and and uh, other people's democracy. I think that is Canadian, and we should maintain that and try and increase that where we can. All right. Well, thank you very much. Now, Mr. Uh, uh, now, Fernando, you have a question there too. And yeah. Uh, well, I don't. I don't have a question. I have about four or five uh, uh, propositions that have okay. been put to some uh, readers, and they have given their answers, and they there are percentage figures given. Uh, the whole issue is about Palestine, and uh, I am happy that I got Palestine because I happen to know a little bit about the, uh, the antecedents, the genesis of the whole Palestine question. Uh, since 1948, when, when Israel was, was created out of uh, Palestinian lands, uh, the UN uh, and the British, uh, under the British mandate, uh, it, it so happened that uh, they, it displaced millions of Palestinians. They became homeless. Uh, in, uh, from the time of the creation of uh, 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 Israel. Now, Hamas, I, I have, should we condemn Hamas or should we uh, negotiate with them? My answer to that is yes. Hamas was democratically elected in Palestine. George Bush and his sidekick, Stephen Harper, decided that that democratically elected government should not have the reins of power. And that is the whole issue that is now in the Palestinian lands, which is now actually a caricature of what should have been Palestine. Mm -hmm. And did uh, Canada cut some aid when uh, the Hamas was elected? The, the Canada cancelled the already uh, the, that aid that was being given to Hamas mm -hmm. after Israel um, uh, invaded. Uh, Palestine and, 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 and Lebanon, uh, uh, Canada cancelled it under the Stephen Harper government and this was uh, something that went against two very essential uh, uh, propositions. One was democracy. They are preaching about democracy and having democratically elected governments all over the world but then went out and stopped a democratically elected government. What, that is number one. What, what do you think Canada should do? Canada should get uh, revert back to its traditional peacekeeping role that was uh, that has been the hallmark of Canadian foreign policy. Do we have any peacekeepers in Palestine? We, in name, there are uh, people who are uh, going there to, but they have the United Nations has a mandate, but they are holed up in one office, and there is absolutely no uh, peacekeeping that, uh, done. But we should invite Hamas and the, all the stakeholders into a conference and try to resolve the problem. Diplomatically. Diplomatically. Not through militarization that Stephen Harper revels in, nor through uh, tanks. As my friend uh, Rashid Arab said, it's not through tanks that you resolve these problems. It's through sheer diplomacy. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Fernando. We continue with Judy Higginbutton mm -hmm. from South Surrey, White Rock, Cloverdale. Thank you very much. Uh, your question because my have question, a question is, there. Canada's relations with Israel, and um, I am supposed to select one, uh -huh. but my, um, the one that I would select is, Thank should you. offer help in peace and diplomacy. And that was exactly what you were saying. Um, over a period of many years, Canada has... Uh, a force in about 35 countries around the world. Our strength is building democracy and bringing diplomacy to nations who do not have the ability to sit down and discuss in a democratic or shall we say a neutral territory manner the challenges that they face. I don't think anybody in Canada has not been touched in some way by the conflict in Palestine and in Israel because we have many, many religions that want to travel to that place around the world and, and be there. This is, I believe, a place that can, uh, Canada should be involved in, do but you know, we sh Do you know how big the... Uh foreign aid is uh, to Israel compared to the aid that we give to Palestine? I couldn't answer that question. Mm -hmm. but, but you know that we, we do give, uh, we do give uh, 
aid to Israel. Yes. And my understanding is that we we give aid to the area. We give aid and we have peacekeeping forces there, but I'm not certain how long. Mm. Let me say also that we have many of our Surrey RCMP, not many, but individuals that go over there because they're so very well trained in the ability to assess a certain situation. Where, I, in Palestine you're talking about? Israel? And in Israel. And, and in places, Israel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what the challenge here, and all I, I can see is I can't answer complex okay. questions such as this, so, nor okay. do I want to. But I do want and would um, support the um, opportunity to go there as a peacekeeping force. I don't believe in expelling, that one of the questions was expelling Israel's ambassador. How do you talk to an individual if you expel them and you banishment and there's no conversation going on? Thank you very much. Julie, we'll have to uh, bring the microphone all the way to the other end here to start again. And uh, we, we, you haven't answered our, our topic yet, so uh, Mr. Daliwal, please tell us uh, what your question is and uh, if you agree with one of those uh, answers or you want to bring a new one. Oh, I mean, if I look at this, uh, this is a uh, no, uh, question is on arms trade. Arms and, trade, and, right. uh, and the number of votes I see is uh, is eleven casted votes, and which is a very very Low. small sample. Yeah. And very, okay. very small. But with yours, it'll be twelve. Uh, <laughs> mine will be twelve. <laughs> you are certainly certainly right. And and, and, and but the and question here is specifically about arms, arms trade. trade. That's where Should I'm coming we? right now. Because okay, the thing is, arms trade. Yeah. You know, when it comes to arms trade, we've got to to make sure because when, whenever we have a mission, whether it's an Afghanistan mission, whether it was an Iraq mm -hmm. mission, where we were fortunate not to send the forces in, we have three parts to this, uh, This, you know, we have defense, democracy, and development, mm -hmm. right? Do we, do we trade arms with other countries or we don't trade arms with other I countries? I personally see that, uh, that uh, we should not trade uh, arms, mm -hmm. but we but should we have would only have a... arms to, to mm -hmm. protect. We need to have arms for the defense of our, yeah. our, our forces and security sure. of forces, we must secure that, right, if how we about, don't produce uh, it locally, right, and we the, should do that. How about all the people that work making the, the, the arms, uh, they're going to be unemployed? Like where? You mean in the U.S. Canada or in Bush's, uh, no, in Bush's Canada, administration? In Canada, we produce quite a bit of arms. No, I mean, that's, this is where, I, this is where I'm, I'm, I'm going. I'm, I'm telling you is that, that we should create alternate uh, uh, industries as well, All right. right? To All make right. sure that uh, we are going we back produce. to be known as weapons uh, of mass as, destruction. As peace, peace mm -hmm. All right. right. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Well, we're running almost out of time. We have only a few minutes left, and uh, uh, we're we're, we're going to go very briefly and to uh, uh, Michael Wolf and and see if he has to uh, some less than a minute quick reaction to any of the other questions that was in yours and you want to say something about it yes i'll respond to what we just heard um i do agree that we should not be trading arms i do feel we should completely abolish them and the fact is we need to stop uranium mining and all development in the tar sands to make this possible we just heard last night at the leaders debate in the united states them talking about america becoming independent energy. Well, what they're going to be doing is taking all the uranium and oil that we take out of the ground in Canada and using it for arms and conflict uh, forced by uh, NATO. So we need to end our, our taking the resources out of the ground if we actually want to end arms conflict right. from Canada. All right. Now, in, in one minute, because we're running out of time, we have just about 10 minutes left. Uh, why don't you tell us in one minute why people should vote for you? As your final thought. Okay. As my final point, uh, voting for Michael Wolf and the Green Party of Canada is going to bring about that change that we're talking about. Yes, we talk about that there's choice in this election. Well, if we look in the states, it's again, it's going back and forth between the the two evils. And if we want to go lesser of two evils, we pick one or the other. And what that does is it just allows these two major parties that have been governing Canada for too long to one makes problems and then one says, oh, we'll fix it. And then the other makes problems and the other one will say, fix it. But at the same time, we're not having any action on climate change. And we're just uh, allowing social spending to be... Um, to not come to the most needy and vulnerable people in Canada. All right, and so vote for Michael Wolf right, right. and Green Party for that. Thank you very much. Michael, now we continue with uh, Rashid Arab. And uh, first, in, in one minute or less, uh, any topic that uh, you wanted to say something? Yes, uh, I want to talk about Canadian image on an international stage. When I was 12 years old in Lebanon, Wait, during, the, yes, okay. during the Civil War, yes. Canadian was looked at the peacekeepers as angels. 
We remember in our newspaper that Americans used to steal Canadian flag in the United Nations to come to Beirut to go to Tripoli to tour Lebanon. So Canada, Canadian image was always a peace image for children, for adults, for everything. Stephen Harper's has changed that image. No, it's not. Okay. And, and why should people vote for you? I vote for me because I believe here in Surrey North, we have a serious issue for the working families are being totally ignored. With my background being in the union movement before and then moving to management, and with my ethnicity background, I believe I can represent everybody in our community, regardless of their ethnicity or cultural background, and all the working people will be taken into account first before the large corporation. Thank Good. you. Thank you. Brian Marlott, uh, very quickly, uh, something that uh, comes to your mind that others discussed and you wanted to say something about it. Well, there is one point that I think is really important, that uh, when we engage in involvement in other countries and foreign policy broadly, or whether it's humanitarian aid or humanitarian intervention, uh, that we be concerned that we are supporting uh, the people there, that we're not imposing our way of life upon them. Uh, this isn't about regime change, it's about helping the people in those places that are suffering. And that's, that's the essence of what okay. I'd like to say on the subject. And uh, your final thought on why should people vote for a progressive Brian Marlett? Well, the Progressive Canadian Party is composed of progressive conservatives. We are progressive conservatives, not neoconservatives. I believe in a strong united Canada and parliamentary democracy and the independence of the judiciary and the rule of law, as I said earlier. Our first Prime Minister, Sir John A. Macdonald, wrote that one, Canada is not half a dozen provinces, Canada is one great dominion. Stephen Harper instead speaks of firewalls and provincial autonomy. He also seem, seems to wish to be a one-man government. His ministers and now his candidates are being silenced. In 2006, he said we need, to, uh, we, we need not fear a radical hidden agenda. The courts, the media, the Senate and the public service were, he, were, he said, uh, there to oppose him and he has systematically reduced the impact and the uh, efficacy of the courts, the media, the Senate okay. and the public service. Okay, thank Mr. Marlett, thank you very much. We don't have much time to, to go over a minute, but if we can pass the microphone to uh, uh, Michael uh, Frank. San Michael Frank from Surrey North and uh, Canadian Action Party. Uh, was there anything that you wanted to say something very quickly? Uh, no, I mean, after a very diverse array of, of people, of parties, of political representations, um, oh, with one notable exception that isn't actually uh, uh, here. But anyways, other than that, I mean, everybody had such wonderful <laughs> things to say. I, uh, I've been educated by these people, and I'm glad to have sat, uh, sat with them all. So and, and now we're all confused. So wh wh why should people vote for you? Well, uh, the reason that people should be voting for me in Surrey North is because of exactly as I was saying earlier, the Canadian Action Party is representing some significant fundamental problems with the direction that Canada is going in right now, including the Security and Prosperity Partnership and the neglect of the Bank of Canada, which is another issue I didn't have a uh, an opportunity to touch on. Basically, you as a Canadian voter own the Bank of Canada and it is not being used. It is supposed to supply us with our economy. Instead, private banks are being used to pilfer us. And uh, to have those issues represented in Parliament would change the direction of Canada in the future. All right, thank you very much, uh, Sam Frank, uh, and now Brenda Log, uh, the Liberal from Freakwood, Port Kellys. Well, um, my response would be that we are truly blessed to live in uh, Canada, and I think we have a role to play in the world. We have a role to play and to demonstrate um, to people how all different cultures can live and work and play together in harmony and I think that is the gift of Canada and we should be able to share that with the world. And why should people vote for you? Uh, people should vote for me because I'm approachable. Um, lots and lots of people know me. I, uh, I love the city, I love our community and I love people and I, and I do believe that um, there is lots of voices in our community that are not being heard. I think they must be heard. I, uh, I'm open and I'm very willing to uh, dialogue with everybody from all walks of life. All right, thank you very much, Brenda. And now Mr. Fernando, now Fernando, NDP. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I couldn't help but no, uh, note that when the, uh, li uh, the Liberal Party candidates were talking about Lester Pearson, I must note that uh, the present Liberal Party has abandoned Lester Pearson's policies, uh, got into bed with uh, Stephen Harper, and uh, uh, passed the uh, motion to extend the Afghanistan mis mission to 2011. We were the only party, the New Democrats were the only party, was the only party that opposed that, ex other than uh, the national parties, of course, the bloc also opposed it. And uh, uh, so they have abandoned Lester Pearson's neutrality, uh, and it's a shame. Uh, however, the reason why people should 
uh, vote for me is because I have a 33-year 33, 33 history of representing people. I have represented people right across uh, two provinces, once uh, for a while in Alberta and for the last 19 years in BC. And I know, working within the fed federal jurisdiction, I know how to navigate the maze that is the federal government. So and you, have, you have experience. I have experience in the federal jurisdiction, and I'm a fighter for working people. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Uh, now Fernando. We continue with uh, Judy Higginbutton, and uh, one, one issue very briefly that uh, come to your mind. Well, thank you very much, and I thought we had a budding friendship here, and then all of a sudden, I just want to say that Harper's government is the house that Jack built, because he, in right fact, on, right on. he, in fact, he, he called the government down when we had the ch early childhood learning program to be 43 forward. times they voted for, with the government. I believe that you have to take a good look at, at the records and what happened. Paul Martin did talk to Jack Layton and asked him to wait three months to get some very progressive legislation through. He said no. I know Jack Layton, he's a bright young man, but I can't quite forgive him for not doing that and, and allowing us to bring in those programs and <laughs> then call the election. Okay. And then the other issue is why do you want to deal with, with liberals? Because liberals are the fixers, as young Mr. Wolf said over there. We fixed all the progressive, conservative governments right. over periods of times and balanced the budget to become more Canadian. Thank you very much for your time. We have to bring in uh, Mr. Daly. Well, we'll, we'll leave him out, your, your fellow Libra. So uh, briefly, in one minute, uh, what, uh, what was something that you wanted to say and uh, why should people vote for you? I certainly uh, would like to touch on the Afghanistan mission. Uh, you know, we had made a, an international commitment uh, uh, to be in Afghanistan to be a peacekeeper. And we all know that when Mr. Harper took over, he changed the mission from peacekeeping mission into a combat mission, putting 80% of the resources into the combat, only 20% into the into the uh, into the development. Yeah. And you know I what it is, and, and and you know what it is. It, it is NDP and Jack Layton that's fully responsible. He just did it just to gain a couple of seats, and he has put the working families. He has put our international reputation at risk. I think it's totally Jack Layton is, now, is responsible. Should... And I personally believe now, because we have made, as a, as a country, we have okay. a commitment till 2011, and we should get the forces out on that day. And, and we have enough time to, and, and to deal with that situation. And vote for you because? Oh, I mean, certainly uh, this campaign, when we look at this, is, is, is very clear. And it's about two distinct visions. On one side, you know, you have an extreme right-wing Harper government uh, that has broken promises, put our country on the edge of a, a recession and deficit, put the environment on the back burner, and played games with the safety of our families. And on the other vote, side, yeah, and people I, should vote for you because why? On the other side, because uh, you have a candidate and a, and a liberal team that believes in progressive and ambitious vision for Canada, and we believe in building a fairer, greener, and richer country for all Canadians. And I can okay. tell you, and I have delivered no, no. that in the last uh, three years uh, in the Parliament, Mr. and Mr. I've been well, successful. Thank you very much for coming. We're out of time, and uh, we're going to be cut off. So thank you very much all for coming. Thank you.